You're a medical doctor and then the health sector is one area in Nigeria that we have so much issues, so much issues. The one in my village, it's like you're walking into a bush, the way it is, it, it's not functional. And um, what will you do differently from what the current government is doing to, to ensure that anyone can walk into a hospital within his community and get treatment, get immunization for their kids and all they need in terms of their health? I think the first thing is having the people in position of power who have a different mindset from what currently prevails. Those people who are in position to implement our various health policies are people who themselves do not use those health facilities because they have access to health facilities either in Nigeria or abroad. Okay, so that's the first thing, that you've got to have people with the mindset of commitments to local health services. Secondly, you've got to have a mindset that says, hang on, good health care delivery is not just about building expensive teaching hospitals, equipping them with CT scans and things like that. Good health care starts with preventative medicine, with public health. Stop people from falling ill or having illnesses that are preventable in the first place. Have facilities that you can pick up things early it's not when somebody has had a stroke and you start finding where are we going to take this man to or this woman to. Find out a way where you can know that this man is having his blood pressure checked periodically, even if it's once a year or whatever. The same thing with other common conditions like diabetes, like uh, um, uh, prostate you know, cancer or prostate hyperplasia for the older men. All of these conditions are things that our people need to know about. So health education is important. Promoting well-being as opposed to just treating pathology, very important. Primary health care, very, very important. The late Olikori Ransom Kuti made vast inroads in terms of that. But since then, we've beaten a retreat and we've gone back to where we were. We did not sustain that. We didn't hide beyond where he stopped. So he was somebody who had a different mindset, a different way of thinking. And he had the opportunity as health minister to pursue it, which he did passionately, aggressively, and successfully. But we needed people like that to continue that battle. It didn't happen. We've gone back. Now we need to get people like that thinking again, moving things forward. So it's very important. That's why I said from the beginning, it's all about working for the people, with the people, engaging the people. That means by the people. Change that mindset. Get the right way of thinking. And then the rest of it is, will follow. We are not short of excellent health policies in this country. Government after government after government since independence. If you go to the Federal Ministry of Health, you find lots of health policies put together by experts, people being brought together for the purpose. We are not short on policy. What we are short on is implementation. We all talk about youth empowerment. As far as I'm concerned, the primary thing, and you will see that when my manifesto comes out, is jobs, jobs, jobs. That's the first thing for the youths. They must have source of employment. They must have source of income. They must have something to look forward to, as opposed to now, where it's almost a case of abject hopelessness. Agriculture is obviously my number one priority. And when you talk about farming, it doesn't mean everybody has to go tilling the ground. It's a value chain. So there are some people that are preparing the ground, there are other people who are planting, there are people who are harvesting. When you get the final product, it has to be processed, so there are people involved in processing. From there, there are people who are going to be agro-related industries. Then from there, you go to marketing. So it's a whole chain. So even if you're not a young person that is interested in tilling the ground, you're interested in marketing, it's there for you. There are spin-offs, small and medium enterprises, micro-enterprises, that will all come from all of this. And it takes me back to my key word, which I referred to earlier, integration. For, for me, I, I really don't believe so much in APC's uh, school feeding program. What do you think about it? I would want to know why you don't subscribe to it. It's not enough for people to come and say, we don't like this program or we don't like that program. For instance, in my village, my community, Blokiti, 
I traveled home some some months ago. The primary school, Otoli Primary School, that's the name. That primary school, the roof, part of the roof is off. And they feed these children under this roof. And I, I ask myself, do they need to be under a roof, a, a, a building without a roof and feed? Or have a building with a roof and then don't have food and then study well? You, do you really subscribe to this school feeding program? I subscribe to the school feeding program. What you are saying is not a criticism or non-acceptance of feeding as an important facility for the students. What you are saying is that it's not just enough to feed them, they must also have a roof over their head. And that applies to everybody. Even in my own house, I can't be feeding myself and I don't have a roof. So yes, you feed them, but you also provide a roof over their head. So it's absolutely important. One is not exclusive of the other. Uh, it's important that our children should be well nourished. If you're not well nourished, then you, your, your brain development is affected uh, and that has implications for your adult life. If you're not well fed, then you can't be walking around going to library and so on when your stomach is empty. So the school feeding program is an important one, uh, indeed a very important one. Uh, obviously, we've got to look at finances and see how that you know, dovetails with other priorities for the students. Uh, but the pursuit of a school feeding program does not mean that we should neglect you know, the infrastructure of the school in terms of you know, the desks and tables, the roof, uh, provision of uh, teachers and facilities for teachers to work with. That is why we need an integrated approach to development, not a piecemeal approach and not sloganeering. You know, you come up with this program or that program and so on. You've got to show that you have a complete package and that's where people like me come in. We are bringing a different way of looking at politics, a different way of offering service to the people, a different way of pursuing the national development agenda. That is why you need people like us. Those who have been in the system for so long, who say, I've been here, I've done that, I've been there, that, you know, all those have failed us. All those have failed us. We need new ideas, we need new people, we need new approaches. So what you are saying, is not just a criticism of the school feeding program. What you are saying is that we need an integrated and comprehensive approach. So we're not just adapting ourselves to a little problem here and neglecting all the other problems there. We need to look at the whole picture and that requires creative thinking and it requires fresh thinking, which is what I'm offering.